Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Bianchi, and today we're going to be talking about ratios in your devices. And I have some examples of some devices that we'll be talking about, such as your Chromebook, your cell phone, an HD television set, one of those old analog TVs. These are all examples of things that display our content. So what we're going to try to figure out for our objectives are, we're going to review the concept of similar figures, which is something we learned a while ago. We're going to define aspect ratio. We'll explore the aspect ratio of our various devices. We'll determine if device screens have equal ratios, and then we're going to practice solving some proportions, which you need to know how to do for the test. So let's just review something that we learned a while back, and that's the idea of similar figures. What are they? Similar figures are figures that are the exact same shape, but are different sizes. Two figures are similar if the lengths of their corresponding sides form a proportion. And later we're going to talk about what does this have to do with aspect ratios. Now we looked at these same figures before when we studied area. So I'm just going to take a look at this one and this one. And we're going to talk about why these are similar to each other and why they also are proportional to each other. So if we take what we might think of as the length of the small one. So I'm going to call that one the small one and this one the large one and we look at the length and the width. So how about we look at the width and the length and set up a proportion. So the width of the small one is six. The length of this one is eight. The width of the large one is nine. The length of the large one, that's what this stands for, L is length, is 12. Now these two ratios are equal. What's our evidence of that? We have a lot of ways we can figure that out, but one thing that we've done in class is just looked at the cross products. The green pro cross product is 72. The blue cross product is 72. So again, if figures are similar to each other, that means the corresponding side. So what's a corresponding side? This side right here corresponds with this side and this side corresponds with this side. They form a proportion. So that would be true for any figure that would be considered proportional. It doesn't have to be a, a rectangle, it can be any shape. So another thing I want to point out to you, and I'm just going to use my tool here, if I try to trace over this carefully, all right, I just trace that. Now, did you know that we can make this smaller or we can make it bigger? So if I make it bigger, I have this tool on my smart notebook software that allows me to just kind of stretch this out. Now I'm making it bigger, but I'm not, it's still a similar figure. Now I can check to see if this thing fits over top of that and it does. Now I can even make another similar figure. It's even bigger than, than this one by pulling on that little circle. And that is still similar to all of the ones shown in the picture. All right, so what does that have to do with aspect ratios? What does that have to do with it? Let's learn about that. What is an aspect ratio? An aspect ratio is simply the ratio of how wide an image is to how tall that image is. So let's just use our cell phones as an example of something that we might consider the aspect ratio of. So if we had to estimate how wide this thing is, in other words, how many centimeters across do you think that is? And how tall is this thing? If you estimated how tall it is, you would have a number, right? You'd have the width and you'd have the height. Now, if you're writing it as an aspect ratio, you know, we would put the, uh, usually what we do is we put the, the larger of the two numbers is typically written first and the smaller of the two numbers is typically written second. All right, so just give that some thought. What do you think those two numbers are? Now, what about other devices? What about your Chromebook? If we were to measure going across Let's say we're going to measure going across that way, and then we're going to measure going this way. What would those numbers be? What about um, one of those old analog TVs? If we were to figure out how, how far across it is and how you know tall the thing is, the screen itself, what do you think that is? By the way, analog TVs, um, they were popular when I was a child. Um, but in 1998, people started to convert um, their homes to having the HD TVs, which have a different aspect ratio, ratio which we're going to learn in just a second. Um, and they, in 2009, that's when they stopped broadcasting in analog, so people were kind of forced to, to do the HD TV thing. 
All right, so if we think about how TVs have evolved, um, back in the 1930s, the screens were really small. But if you think about the, are these similar? If we were going to try to estimate whether or not the image itself is a similar image for all the TVs from the 1930s to the 1970s, and even rating right through 2000, the, but they are. There's, there's similar figures, even though they have kind of curved corners, but we'll talk about that a little bit more. But once we introduced the HD TV, which became more popular in 2010, um, the aspect ratio changed. All right, so I like to show this image just because these are actual television sets owned by various family members of mine. This is my twin brother's TV, and I love this because it's his cat, and they were watching a basketball game, and the cat kept batting at the ball, thinking that it was a real thing. So I just love that picture. But this is an actual analog TV that Dr. Bianchi uh, uh, had uh, at one point. In fact, um, it wasn't that long ago that we got rid of this TV. But this is one of those old analog TVs. And this is actually um, the case that his parents had at their house. And, and as a matter of fact, um, this case, what, what his family did is they took the television set out and you know, opened it up and put a, another analog TV inside it. And I just, I, I just had to laugh at that. All right. So in 1998, that's when the HD television came along. So again, what does this have to do with aspect ratios? Now, there's a video that I asked you to watch. Um, the link is available on Google Classroom, but if you wanted to actually type it in the URL, here it is on YouTube. And this individual did mention a lot of these ratios in the videos. He mentioned this ratio, this ratio, all of these he mentioned. So what we have to think about is which ratio goes with what device, or are they all the same? Are these things equivalent? Well, if we look at, let me see if I can make that a little bit bigger. If we think about the aspect ratio of some of the display content that we use today, one of the things that we use pretty often is this idea of you know HD TV, most widescreen TVs. They have an aspect ratio of a 16 to nine is what they call it. Now, if you were to simplify that or, or write it as a unit rate, what does a unit rate mean? It means that that smaller number, that second number listed what is it if you turn that into a one? And what would it be, would be, let's write this down in a fraction format so we can look at it. So again, we're talking about HD TVs, DVDs. It's a 16 to nine ratio, but if I wanted to know what is it for one, and I'm like figuring out this number here, then you can see that I'd have to take out my trusty calculator. In fact, let me do that. Let's get the calculator going here so we can see, make it smaller. All right, so if I take, 16 and divide it by 9, see I get this 1.7 repeating with the bar notation. So we would probably round that to 1.78. So what do they round it to? They round it to 1.78. So I'm just going to replace the question mark with what we know it to be, which is 1 rounded would be 1 and 78 hundredths. All right, now remember, equal ratios have equal cross products. Now, this would obviously be equal to 16, this cross product. Now, because we're rounding, this rounded would be about 16, about 16, but wouldn't be precise because we did round that. All right, so let's move the calculator out of the way, and let's look at some other things that um, have aspect ratios listed here on the table. So one of the things that was mentioned in that video that I did ask you to watch um, was... Uh, they mention about the old analog television set, which is a four to three ratio. Now written in simplest form, and let's write that again. Let's write it kind of more in a fraction format. So that's four to three. And where do we get this 1.333? Well, let's take the calculator and show you. If I take four, that's this numerator, and divide it by three, I get that 1.333. So um, that means that if you're talking about writing it as more of what we might think of as a unit rate, it's the 1.3 with the bar notation, you know, repeating. So most folks would just round that to 1.33 or 1 and 33 hundredths. So here's the rate. It's a little blurry, I apologize, but this is 1 and 33 hundredths to 1 in simplest form. So again, this last column is showing all the ratios more as a unit rate in simplest form. Now, they also give you a number in the middle. And we'll talk about that um, maybe later. But the, the columns that I want you to focus on for now are the first column and the second column. All right, 
So let's cover most movies. Most movies. They have, uh, we have wide movies, and then they have something called Panavision or Cinemascope. And then they even have Ultra Panavision. And some of you may have heard of IMAX. Now, why, why is this important to understand? Now, you may not know this about me, but I am a former projectionist at the Mohawk Mall Movie Theater. So I'm going to come back to these ratios in just a moment. But what's important for you to understand for now are television, the analog television of the olden days and the modern television. And I should add that a lot of your devices, such as your cell phone and your Chromebook, um, also have a, a ratio that's kind of similar to this. So let's move on and we'll come back to that idea. So I wanted to just show you this, this little grid because it kind of helps you to understand the ratios a little bit better. So if you look at this red rectangle that I formed, do you see how it's four going one way and three going the other way? Now that means that if I was to take this, and I'm just going to pull it away for a second, and if I was to enlarge it or make it smaller, that that ratio that's going to be consistent with the ratio that you need for the four to three. So that's the standard, um, let me get it back to that four to three. That's pretty close. Now if we look at this blue one, if I count how many units I have going this way, it's one. And it's not quite two units going this way, but it seems to be more than one and a half, right? So it's, it's a one by something more than one and a half. Now, if you look at some of the things that it could be, could it be this one as an estimate, perhaps? Could it even be maybe even this, like the, the HDTV? Could be, right? Now, let's look at this green one. This one has three going this way. And one, two, three, four, five, and a little more going the other way, but not quite six. So again, it's three going this way, and one, two, three, four, five, and a little more going this way. So if we go back through the ratios here and look for something that has that as a, as a ratio, do you see anything in here? See right here? Most movies, that's this, right? So three going this way and a little more than five. So this is like supposed to represent the number five and six tenths. So let me just write that here so you can see it. Five and six tenths going this way and three going that way. So that's most movies. Now I want to just drag this red thing off to the side and this green thing off to the side. And uh, let me see if I can even move this calculator here. Let's move that out of the way. And then you can put it down, maybe even on the bottom, so we can see this a little bit more clearly. All right, I apologize for the delay. All right, now I'm going to put these side by side, and it's my hope that you can clearly recognize that they're not similar at all. They're not similar. So um, what if we were going to enlarge this, right? Enlarge it. Or what if this is a movie and we wanted to display it on a television set? So if we want to display it on one of those old school television sets, do you see the problem that we have here? Now, the red represents the display of the television screen and the green represents a movie. Now, the problem that movie producers have is if, if I make this bigger, see, let's make it bigger to fill up the screen. If I make it bigger, do you see how, make it even bigger, do you see how going this way, I fill up the screen, but going this way, I lose part of the image. Now, some film producers don't want people messing with their films because they don't want, what if there's something really important going on in the movie over here, and there's something really important going on in the movie over here? See, they don't want somebody to try to decide, like, what do we, you, you would have to crop it, right? So what sometimes you see when you watch it is you see... It's shrunken down so that you're not losing any of the movie. But the issue is you have black bars that are shown at the top and the bottom. So why do you see that? It's because the aspect ratio of the, the viewing device, which might be a, a, a four to three aspect ratio television set, and the aspect ratio of whatever is being um, shown on that device, such as a movie, don't match. So... Here's another example of a super widescreen movie. This one is even less able to fit on one of those four to three ratio TVs. All right, but to understand a little bit better, um, here's something I found on the internet that, and I'll make that a little bit bigger, 
that shows the display aspect ratios. And again, some, sometimes people round numbers, but this is kind of what you'll typically see. So the ones you really need to know, you need to know this one about the, you know, the old school um, t television sets. Some computer displays are a five to four ratio. Some smartphones and widescreen computer displays have a 16 to 10 ratio, but this is the one that's more common, the 16 to nine. And it's the one that was mentioned in that PBS video that I asked you to watch. When you go to the movie theater and you're watching a movie, the standard movie dimensions are the one and 85 hundredths to one ratio. But if you see one that's in CinemaScope, then that's this ratio. All right, so let's learn a little bit more about um, what that means. So this is something I found, um, this is really more intended for filmmakers, but this kind of shows um, some of the ratios for some of the thing when you go to a, see a movie, these are some of the ratios um, that you might sometimes come across. So your standard cinema and then your cinematic widescreen, which we sometimes call Panavision or CinemaScope. So they, they give a slightly different ratio, but pretty similar to the ones that we were talking about just a few minutes ago. All right, so um, ask yourself this. We talked about this just a moment ago. Why are there black bars on the screens? So you'll see two different scenarios. One scenario is you have an HD TV that has that 16 to nine ratio and you're displaying a four to three ratio um, uh, television program that could happen. So if the, what is being displayed is something that was produced prior to the development of the HD TV, then this is a common thing that you'll see on an HD TV. So if you're watching like a good example, I don't know if anybody watches me TV, but let's say you're watching Brady Bunch, which was broadcast with a four to three ratio. If you're watching on an HD TV, the ratios don't match. So you would see the black bars on the side. Now, if you're looking at something that was in CinemaScope that has that two and three tenths to one ratio, that's not gonna be displayed properly on an analog TV that has a four to three ratio. So you would see the black bars on the top and the bottom so that the, um, the filmmaker doesn't have to zoom in and then lose the stuff on the side. All right, now another thing that's kind of a fun fact, did you know that Google Slides, which a lot of us use, offers options for your page setup for you to change the, what we call the aspect ratio. So in their view, standard is four to three, but they also offer a widescreen and a super widescreen, and then you can even customize it. So, um, you know, consider playing around with that at some point if you've never, looked at that look at that i think it'll really help you to understand the difference between these aspect ratios all right now if you go to the theater and this is where i get really excited because i used to be a projectionist um in fact the theater that i worked for had screen had not screens i'm sorry curtains on the side and there a lot of people don't understand the purpose of the curtain in, in a theater setting and in fact i'm pretty sure that a lot of modern if you, I haven't been to Crossgates Mall or Colony Center or any of those, any of those uh, theaters in years because I just, you know, I, I just watch stuff on television instead. But I want to explain why these side curtains in particular exist. So I'm just going to take, this is, um, this is the aspect ratio for the CinemaScope. Now, do you see the issue here? If I put that on and, you know, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. So if you make it smaller, you, you see the issue there? So what would a projectionist do? What would the projectionist do? They would, um, there's ropes that pull the curtain open. Now, when I worked at Mohawk Mall, we actually had a, um, like a button that we could press from the projection booth to get the curtain to open automatically, but sometimes it didn't always work. So this is CinemaScope and the ratio for that is different than um, this I actually um, have the actual film from this movie. We had Lady in the Tramp at Mohawk Mall and the film broke and I took a picture of it. So if you look at the uh, aspect ratio here, see that's a little more appropriate. I can even make that bigger, a little more appropriate for that particular screen. Now, if you take a CinemaScope and you try to put it on a analog television, do you see the issue there? It's not, so you have to shrink it down. If you shrink it down, see you gotta, you gotta get the width in there, but see the issue? So what do, what do filmmakers, or I should say, what do television, people are making decisions about how things are displayed on a television. They would have to decide, you know, what are we gonna crop on that? All right, now, likewise on your devices, you know, if you're gonna see, if you're gonna try to watch one of these CinemaScope movies on your cell phone, you know, would that, would that fit? 
see it if I shrink it down and kind of see is that a match? See, it's really not quite a match, is it? And even on your um, Chromebook screen, right? That's not a match. They're not similar figures. All right, now if you've ever been to the drive-in, they don't have curtains because they would get wet with the rain. So if you don't have one of those CinemaScope movies, then you often see the black on the side. And the reason that they can't, um, you know, they, they can't have the screen be this size is because if they do have a CinemaScope movie, they need the room to project the movie. And these screens are very, very big, the ones that are outdoors. Now, did you know, fun fact, that right on Central Avenue, just up the street from Lycia Kill Middle School, in fact, what's there today, the Coles Plaza is there today, and there's a McDonald's and a Wendy's and uh, O'Toole's is back there, and the Coles is a little bit farther back. But this is an image of the same location in 2022. Back in 1971, the Mohawk Drive-In still existed, and people were still going there, and I went there, um, you know, when I was a kid. And here's the screen. Now, the projection booth is somewhere over here, but, um, you know, pretty exciting stuff that we had the technology um, of drive-in movies to enjoy when we were young people, you know, people that are my age. Um, so here's me working at the Mohawk Mall Movie Theater, and this is the projection booth. I worked there from 1984 to 1990. And here I am again, and here's my friend. You can see the projection um, booth. This is the, the larger of the projection booth, because at one point at Mohawk Mall, we actually added a couple more theaters. So at one point we had as many as seven theaters, but when I first started working there, we only had three. And the film has to go through this uh, machine, which we call a projector. So uh, we're going to just review some concepts that we learned before uh, using proportions. So film travels through a projector at a rate of 24 frames per second. So this would be a frame right here and there's a sprocket that pulls it through and there's a shutter so that you don't notice that it's moving through. So it's pretty quick, you know, 24 frames in a second is pretty fast moving through there. So if we kind of pose the question, uh, A, how many frames travel through the projector in 45 seconds? So here's the rate, right? The rate is 24 frames per second. So whenever you solve problems like this, it's always recommended that you set up a proportion. We write the frames on top, second, um, seconds on the bottom, and then we look at the problem, and it, if we pay attention to the unit, then that can help us place the number in the proportion where it belongs. So 45 is talking about seconds. So it wouldn't go on the top, because the way we have this set up, the top is talking about the number of frames, so we would put it on the bottom. And we're solving for how many frames are going to go through. So we'll just put an F there. Now, as it turns out, we don't have to use cross products for this because we do have compatible numbers. But it's always a good idea to get comfortable with the idea of cross products. So to solve this, we would just do 24 times 45. And the other cross product would be 1 times F, which does equal F. And if we take out our calculator again, let's take that out and minimize it here, and we'll do the math. So we're looking at 24 times 45, and we get this number. So it would be 1,080 frames. 1,080 frames. All right. Now, um, on your own, you're going to be doing how many frames travel through the projector in one minute. Now, I do want to remind you that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So you would set it up much like you did here, but instead of putting a 45 here, you would be putting in a 60 because that's equal to one minute. And you would solve. Now, if you're doing C, how many frames travel through the projector in 30 minutes? Now, keep in mind that this is 60 seconds is one minute. So you would have to ask yourself how many seconds would be in 30 minutes. So we would have to multiply that by there's 60 seconds in one minute to get how many seconds that would be. And then we would substitute that value where the 60 is now to find the answer for C. All right. So uh, I do have, uh, we did have a film break, sadly, at Mohawk Mall. We were um, projecting the movie Lady and the Tramp, and it broke, and it was all over the floor, and it was kind of a mess. And when it breaks, you have to literally um, splice it back together and hope that everything um, tapes together nicely. 
Well, this didn't make it back in the movie. It was left on the floor by accident. And I still have it to this day. So this, you know, has been in my possession since the mid 1980s. Um, so here it is, the picture of it. And I, I held it up to the window so that you could actually see the image. Now, um, what I did is I measured how much of it I have. And as it turns out, I have 23 centimeters of it. And I measured it with a ruler. Now, this ruler isn't quite lined up quite right, but I'm just telling you that I measured it. And it's 23 centimeters long. And I counted how many frames so that, see, one frame, two frames, three frames. There's, there were 12 frames. And again, the image has got cut off, but this is what I actually have. So my question to you is, how many centimeters of film would be contained in 96 frames? So where would I put the 96? If this is my proportion, and here's my rate over here for how many uh, frames I have in my 23 centimeters of film. Now, another thing too, if this had been the number 24, it would have been nice to simplify that, but this can't be really simplified. So let's just go with what we have. But where would the 96 go? It would go over here because that's talking about frames. So let me put the 96 over here. And we're solving for how many centimeters. So I'll put a C there. Now, um, as it turns out, 12 is a factor of 96. So we could use the compatible number shortcut on this. Um, so if we do that, 12 times what equals 96? You're going to figure that out. And then 23 times whatever that number is would tell you how many centimeters of film we're talking about. All right, let's move along. Now, just thought it'd be fun to take a look at some images of the Mohawk Mall and at what stands there today. There's a Lowe's, there's a Target. So Target is right here, Lowe's is over here. And then there are a couple other little shops in between. And then this is has the, part of the parking lot has been filled in with, um, I think there's like an old Navy over here. But this road right here, this road right here is Central Avenue, Route 5. Actually, I think they call it State Street once you pass a certain part. And this road right here is Balltown Road. And the movie theater is right here. You can see the, you know, how the roof sticks out a little bit. That was the actual Cinema 1 was over here. And actually, this is Cinema 2 over here, and Cinema 1 was over here. And here's the side entrance to getting to it. And if you look at it from another view, see, this is the theater back here. And then we actually had a third theater over here, too, which was kind of interesting. All right. So, um... One of the things that I should mention is that you still have this assignment that you need to do called ratios in your devices. So if you haven't completed this yet, make sure you watch this video, answer the questions. If they should be pretty easy to answer if you watch the video. And then um, if you need more help with proportions, um, make sure you come see me during the flex time.